Welcome to Studio A3R. One of the things that is, we hope, uh, Scott Fitzgerald and I um, hope, is that you'll find this program different than many. Our goal isn't to celebrate thought leaders and talk about what people have accomplished. We believe that where we're headed is an area of um, uncommon and, the, and unknown. And our focus is more on how are people preparing for an unknown future. Um, we're much more interested in how uh, people that we respect actually practice, how they learn to scan the macro environment, and how they learn to stay centered uh, with so much unknown. Um, and every single program, we'll be focusing on four questions. And the four questions are, where have you been? What have you learned? Where are you going? And what's required? Welcome. Thank you. Um, those are pretty deep. You know, it's when you say I only ha I only have four questions, <laughs> but those are the four questions that you could ask anyone that would take, in some cases, a lifetime to answer. Absolutely. I think the the neatest thing about um, one, I just have to acknowledge that um, doing a podcast has been a goal of mine for five years, and um, two years ago, I kind of had a false start. And um, sometimes when you want to build something beautiful and you have a vision for it and it stops, um, your heart breaks a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, the fact that I'm here with you today in Rochester um, and actually doing this program, I, you know, I'm almost like pinch me. Am I in a dream or is this really, really <laughs> happening? One of the really neat things about RockVox and why um, I wanted to collaborate with you is that, first of all, the Carlson Stromberg Radio which was the very first time the globe was connected through through the radio waves. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think of during World War II, yeah. all I just think about is people kneeling by a Carlson Stromberg radio. Right. right? And where were those mass produced? Right, right here, here in Rochester. Rochester. Right. So it makes complete sense that um, many of our guests actually, are, most of our guests are not going to be even from the United States. So it's just it's just exciting to yeah. be here in Rochester with RockVox, um, kind of just honoring the heritage of our community, you know, doing this. And that the, the, um, the microphone in my logo is a, is supposedly a Strongberg. Uh, yeah. Was it Strongberg Carlson? Carl was it Strongberg Carlson. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, that, that mic is, it's iconic. The old style ribbon mic. Yeah. And, um, I know sure has a knockoff, like sort of new version of it, but, that that is when when you say microphone, that's like the one that everybody and I I'll admit that there's a lot of people that if they use a microphone in their logo, yeah, it's that microphone, right, right. <laughs> but we have a little bit more license to use it just because of the significance of it here in Rochester. Absolutely. So. I you don't do. feel as bad. <laughs> and you know, um, you saw when we were doing the logos for Studio A3R, one of them was a really beautiful microphone mm -hmm. that was so beautiful. Like I really wanted to use it. Um, and the, the problem is there's nothing linear about me. And so, you know, if I, the, the reason we chose the logo that we did is it's really, it's not the medium, it's the message. Yeah. And, and we are, um, we are vibrational, right? If someone, if, if you meet someone and, and you feel a connection, it's usually because of the timbre of their voice, not the words that they say, hmm. you know? And so if I, I think of the reason that we chose the logo that we did have that, um, it, it looks either like, um, drops in a pond, how the, the, yeah, kind the, of the concentric circles yeah. kind of come out of it mm -hmm. or a really like frequency, you know? And so anybody that knows me would say that would be much more the logo that Jen Sertle would want to put out there. Yeah. You, so you, you really subscribe to the idea of frequencies and attraction and that kind of thing. Like we have, like our thoughts are frequencies and we can attract like or similar things to us because of those those ideas well i think i think what gets tricky is that um a lot of people that have seen the secret and a lot of people that are getting into that would would um uh, automatically turn off this program and say oh my god that's kind of new agey yeah um i'm i'm more on the quantum physics idea that um that if you think of our matter is really you know nothing but vibration and um, and it's just the speed of the po the molecules that are vibrating that actually create you know real physical matter, um, and that the more um, the more that we understand um, 
the mind. Oh my God. See what you just did. You just <laughs> took us somewhere. Is that, um, there, there's a lot around past, present, future, how much of our behavior is actually choices versus, you know, some sort of looping, um, already through, through some already existing programming. So, oh my God, I, I think belief systems is something we'll be actually having a lot of conversations about. Yeah. And it's hard to not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, yeah. it's sort of a foundational, you right. know, uh, subject. It, it kind of, I was having a conversation, uh, earlier with, with a, a business coach and, and he, we were talk we were just sort of off topic talking about politics and talking about how his family is, is completely opposite than what he believes in. And I said, Oh yeah, I have the same situation, but I don't, I don't get, I don't have those conversations anymore because this person has their own view. I have my own view and we could go back and forth for hours and really never get further Ugh. in that position, right. you know, and because it all comes down to belief. And when, when you're talking about what you believe in, it's different than, you know, having a conversation about beliefs is a much, is a much different conversation than just. A re I don't even know how to explain it, but you know what I mean? Like I when you're talking about beliefs, belief structures, that's solid. That's the core of who you are. And so telling someone or trying to have a conversation with someone about their beliefs and taking an opposite view, uh, an ad adversarial view, um, it's highly, un you're highly unlikely to get any further. Uh, some people that's their whole life's work is to try to, you know, attack yeah. those beliefs and, and, and get theirs out there. I don't like that. I, I, I like conversations that move, move us together, you know, as a, as two people in a conversation rather than, you know, pushing us apart. Right. So I, I've become better at figuring out when those convert, when a conversation is going that way and sort of weaseling my way out by changing the course of the conversation and saying, Oh, let's talk about this. Right. Right. You know, well, um, I love I love the way that um, conversation. I love you know being in your studio is very comfortable. Thank you. You know I feel I feel like I would you know this should be red wine you know, <laughs> but it is it is that comfortable. Um, I I think we won't ha like we have to kind of stay in our lane. But I do want to say that um, the issue is dialogue. You know, um, nobody has the truth. Mm -hmm. Everybody has perceptions, and so many people are self righteous around this is my point of view. No one's learning, and um, and I'm so sad that people are not, you know, having conversations about what they have in common. Which is, I, I would dare say that um, food, music, um, cancer, right? Those are all things people have, and and not wanting son or daughter to die in battle. Mm. You know, like like it, it, regardless of what you believe, those are I think four yeah. four beliefs that I think I think no matter where you live on the world. That that's something, but dialogue is. There's actually David Bohm. It's B O H M. Um, he, there's a new documentary out about him, and I haven't seen it enough to talk about it. But he was one of the. I wish I had a quote from him right now. He, there's just something beautiful about dialogue, and what dialogue says is that if people are really in the conversation, that that actually something else will emerge. So both will be moved. No one wins or loses, but both will be moved. You know. Fascinating. Yeah, so yeah. Cool. So speaking of our yeah. lane, yeah, talk about what our lane is for this show. <laughs> okay, so um, you know, Pele man, he does not get enough credit, or maybe he does. You know, just I love he's the Pele being the big, greatest the, soccer player of all time. Absolutely. You know, he's he. <laughs> we're gonna do lots of these zigs and zags, and they're gonna not make sense, but <laughs> hopefully they'll be fun. Um, my son does this, by the way. He'll be talking, and then he'll like it, like a leaf falls, and he'll chase the leaf, and, yeah. and then he's like. It's your fault, mom. We we do that all the time. Ooh, something you, shiny. Right, 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 yep. right. So, um, so right now, Pele's right now, kind of zooming around it. Um, he has this amazing quote: "Everything, everything, everything is practice." Mm. And and I, um, there's kind of two things that um, I believe. Um, our culture, American culture, is built on exceptionalism, and um, I think it gets tricky because um, people are afraid they won't be enough. So they're, wor they're worried about winning or getting the best test score 
or survive, you know, all this thing. And no, and so I don't think enough people are talking about practice, right? Hmm. Practice is fundamental. Um, and so our lane is how do people practice in order to navigate change? That That's our lane. Okay. What do you think our lane is? Because we're <clears throat> co-creating this. What lane um, would you like it to be, my friend? No, I like that lane. You like I, it? I like that lane. And, and I, I'm, I'm here to discover more about uh, connections and, and, you know, business leaders and, and, and success. I mean, it's, they're all, they're all very broad terms. Yes. Right. But, right. but there's, because it's so broad, there's so much that you can learn. Yeah. And with the, you know, the group of people that you have lined up mm. to talk to, I'm excited about it because I'm, I just, I want to be a sponge Aww. and just absorb as much as I can, you know? And, and this is a great way to do it. You know, but um, when, another thing, now this is where I'm going to get in trouble because I don't know enough about physics, but um, I think you're a good grounder. Hmm. You know, if I think like, uh, you know, like if, if there's lightning and then there's ti a tire or there's rubber. So right? you're the lightning and I'm the tire. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, Precisely. Is that, is that what we're getting at here? <laughs> Precisely. No, I just, I just think like, no. Besides an absorber, like, um, you, you, I guess to me, when I heard you say the word absorb, I really felt that didn't give you enough credit for how fundamental you are to my success and our program success. Well, thank you. And uh, you know, I, 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 and we we discussed this before we started recording, but this is a journey for both of us and. You know, this is something that we're both going to discover along the way, which I'm excited about. And, you know, you're doing it at my studio. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's yeah. it's a good partnership. I'm, I'm cool. excited about it. Very cool. Yeah. So I will go ahead and kind of model the way, you know, decisions to answer the, the questions. And I am not quite sure. I, I know that each time we do this, it'll kind of take a life of its own. But I, I thought about, well, geez, these are my questions. And I, I will tell you. So I started this process in 2005, asking these questions um, once a quarter myself. These were kind of my central how to recalibrate. I don't know if you have a journal practice. I just started one. You did? Actually, like today. You did not. I swear. I don't believe you. Really? Okay. Well, when we're done, I'll show you. Oh I have God. a journal sitting on my desk, and it just has today in it. Oh, my God. Seriously? <laughs> like, is it like a full moon or something? This is so crazy. No. Okay. So, so you know, when everyone everyone um, tries to create a stick, right? You got to create a stick, and you got to create a, a thing or whatever. And um, more and more, and it might be because I'm over 50, um, instead of creating things, I'm actually looking back and saying what has really worked for me, right? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but it, but it's weird because usually I'm like a seeker and I want to be first. I want to do something wild and I'm like, no. Like, bottom line is, why am I credible with these questions? I've, I've lost a lot of things because of these questions, particularly the, the question, the last one about what's required. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people are really good at where have they been they want to skip what have they learned, right? And then they want to go to where they're going, la da 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 da, lots of time. And then when we go to the, what's required, crickets, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, and I, I've been victim to, of this <laughs> so, as long as I can remember, but, you know, doing the work is always the hardest part. Yeah. I mean, that's why. And people say it all the time, and I hear these quotes of you know various people say it where, you know, it's and I'm gonna I'm messing up the quote, but the idea is you if you go if the geez I'm terrible at this if you're trying to get somewhere you know you take the easy way you know what I'm saying I can't I can't think of I'm trying to word this this quote are you doing that one of those shortcuts where people say let's do a shortcut and they get lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that it's either that or it's like if if it were easy to get there yeah then more people would get there but right. you know what i mean right. it took me way too long to fumble around in that but but that's the idea is that there's a lot of people who who want to get to that success or want it wherever it is they want to get to yeah. but a lot of them don't want to do the work right when they learn what other people have done like you take any any person who's in in the public eye, yeah. Who a motivational speaker or whatever, and they go out there and they and they're in their two thousand dollars suit, 
and they're an incredible speaker, public speaker, and they're just, they own the world, like mm -hmm. Tony Robbins or somebody yeah, like that, right. right? They get out there and they talk about this stuff and they can make everything sound so easy. Mm -hmm. And they send, you know, they, they plan it. This is what you have to do. You want to be successful? This is what you have to do. And people write it down and are like, hey, eat it up. Da -da -da. Yeah. And then when it gets to the point of actually having to sit down and do that stuff, yeah, that's, it's really hard work. Oh and God. so the people that actually can get it done and get achieve that success, you know, there's something to be said about that. And I've done that. I can't tell you how many times where it's like, yeah, I want to achieve this thing. And then it's like, oh, but I got to, that means I got to get up at five and I got to go do this and I got to go and learn, research this and learn how to do this. Like, oh. <laughs> no, know? it's hard. It's hard. Like for me, so reading, I read a ton and I write in a journal a ton but like for me, it's being middle aged. It's doing sit ups. Like it may sound silly, but like the what is the greatest factor that would impact my success the most at this moment? Is, is doing, doing sit ups. Sit -ups. And I and it's like I know I should. You know I've got a journal, right? I've got all the exercises. I've got you know, and and I just I says so I look at you and saying, um, what sucks about this show, is that I'm gonna have to change, to be able to be a steward. And I'm just thinking, like, now, what is the thing that I need to do to honor myself as a leader in the show? And, and the answer that comes up is freaking sit-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, I mean, honestly, it's a big deal. It's like those things that those little well, things. Well, I can't do sit-ups. I used to be able to do a lot of sit-ups. I can't do them anymore. Were I have you, to get were back. you an athlete? I was not an athlete. But um, in I really got into fitness and nutrition some years ago. Yeah. and And... It, it I left it I left it back. I got really like folk super focused yeah, to the yeah. point where I was counting every macronutrient and I was sitting in front of my computer like saying, All right, well if I have that cottage cheese cheese later right. and I up that to, to a half a cup instead of a quarter cup right. and then I get rid of those almonds, then I can achieve this macronutrient breakdown that I was looking for. But then somebody showed up with uh whatever. Wheatgrass. They yeah, showed up with wheatgrass. Somebody showed up with something, and it <laughs> threw all my macros off. So I had oh. to go, and it was driving everybody right. in my life completely crazy. Right. Um, and you know, I I I felt and I felt the best in my life, but at the same time, I was just like so obsessive about it. So now that I've I've worked through quite a few a few things mentally and emotionally in those in that past ten years, yeah. That now I'm I'm ready to to give it all another try, but be a little bit more sensible about it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I think, I think that's just it is, um, is really designing for success, but think of an 18 month calendar instead of a, it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, don't burn out. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, so, so for me, I'll just, I'll start with, you know, where have I been? Um, I've been actually over 20 years, I've owned, um, agility three R, which is a leadership development consulting company. Um, it's taken me, many places abroad, which mm -hmm. is great, which is one of the reasons why I have a, a pretty large uh, global network. Um, I, it was really from 2005 to 2015 that I built that brand. Um, then from 2000, um, was it, did I say that right? It's 2005 to 2015, yep. right? And then 2015 to 2020, um, I've actually been a ghost writer and I've been doing a lot of uh, social media accounts for other people. And it's interesting because I was so very um, forward and very public and then I actually became dark, right? And and I'm, you know, it's almost, I, I, I wanna find the right balance of having visibility and not because I will say that um, although I can be a gracious ghost writer and good, um, I just feel, an impulse to lead and I I don't um, I learned so much about learning when to lead and when to follow that I did this last five years but mm -hmm. it's almost like I took a class <clears throat> on uh, like almost going to do you remember a, an officer and a gentleman mm -hmm. you know that like or, you know the, the person had to learn really to be egoless I never I never passed <laughs> but I'm just saying like, it, like it's this last five years has been quite complex in terms of learning what is the truth about my real message to the world? And is it, is it my ego or is it really something that is valuable? You know, and, um, and so like, that's where I've been. Um, and what I've learned um, is that um, our culture um, doesn't do enough 
teaching around um, saving face. And, um, and what I mean by that is that there's just a lot of pride and a lot of shaming in our culture, in business culture, in our, yeah. in our YouTube culture. <laughs> yeah. and, and so what I've just learned is that um, when people shut down, it's hard to get them back. And, and this moment in history needs the best of all of us. Yeah. You know? Everybody contributes. And, and people that we may not think contribute, like you know, someone that pollinates, Someone that actually is a really good amplifier um, is very valuable. Someone that um, is really good at data and and creating really be beautiful infographics is very like we're all valuable, and it seems like this particular moment in time people are more valuable or less valuable, and it's just weird. Like I don't really want to talk about the pandemic, but just thinking about the the people on the bottom of the pyramid are the ones that are holding the whole world together right now. It's kind of hard to talk about. So yeah. so so what I've learned is that. Um, and what I've so another thing that I've learned is that um, that success isn't what I thought it would be. Um, hmm. You can travel, and you can make money, and you can meet amazing people, and you can you know make a difference and get gratification that you are making a difference. But um, more and more, I don't know if it's a result of my age or if it's the truth. It's just um, feeling a sense of um, joy actually matters it, happiness yeah. actually matters sure and um it never it, it was like duty mattered like gotta work hard gotta do this it's gotta be impactful gotta you know and i'm like mm. i like for the first time in my life um like working with you one of the reasons why i wanted to work with you is that i enjoy your company you make me laugh <laughs> right and that like that's well, thank you but no but like i'm just so that's the you know so that's what i've learned where am i going um my fantasy, if I dare say it, even now in the first program, is mm -hmm. that I would love that we are so successful with our four questions that NPR might choose to help us get the message out. That would be the coolest thing. Where are we going? Um, really is um, just helping stabilize, create an environment for people where there's not some of the polarity, that there's actually real wisdom being shared, you know, so that where you know where we're going, what's required. Um, it's levels of discipline that I've never, ever as a creative been able to, to do. I need to do a phenomenal job um, documenting. Yeah. I need to make sure that I create curations and actually create Google Docs with all the wonderful articles and tagging and making sure that I actually create a playlist, um, not just because it's super fun, but because it matters and it has to be cataloged really well. Um, and I need more off time. I need um, I need to really shut down more, um, and and be you know more focused when I'm on, and then and then really take more breaks. So those are the that's that's where I've been, that's what I'm doing, that's where I'm going, and it feels like the eye of the needle, uh, but I know I know that's what's true for me. Hmm. So now I'm lucky because I've had a, a lot of time practicing these questions. What was it like for you, Scott? <clears throat> to answer these questions? Yeah, like what was it like? What your first thought? It was harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't have mine. I, I, I have yours here. Oh, yeah, okay. That's okay. <laughs> but I didn't, um, so, I guess I, I guess it, 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 I, I wasn't able to think, I didn't have a lot of time to, to think about it. And I wanted to spend more time thinking about it. But, um. Is this the same? No. So, so I love it. So, so what what Scott's referring to is that um, the four questions are the four questions. We, we'll, oh, okay. The, the, All the, right, the right. press. So we also um, one of the things that you're going to see That's on our, what I was on our yeah online. Um, we're going to do a Proust questionnaire, which is a way in which you'll get an opportunity to learn a little bit more about our guests. It'll have information about their favorite movie, favorite books, um, choices. Um, you know, things that are a lot more depth, but um, things that um, the guests will have a lot more control over what they disclose, which is great. But it'll also be something that's evergreen. It's something that um, I, what Scott doesn't know is that like um, he, um, was it um, F. Scott? What, F. Scott oh, Fitzgerald. Oh, no. Yeah. Actually, one of the, the author. one of the authors that you love is Steinbeck, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And um, and Steinbeck has this amazing, well, anyway, so we can go on and on about Steinbeck. So we're going to be putting <laughs> together some great JPEGs and do kind of a lot of um, social media based on how people fill out the Proust questionnaire. 
So the prowess questionnaire is more of an inventory. And then the questions are the questions. We will absolutely, because it's our program, we will have time to do a proper four questions with you. Okay. So, but don't feel I got it confused. Well, I, no, that's, yes, that's what you're talking about. No problem at all. But, but so just in terms of first impressions, don't feel any pressure at all. But I'm just saying, would you feel compelled to share now in our first program together? So I, I really um, connected with the where have I been? Yes. Because I, I did a lot of traveling. Um, well, it was in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, but because I worked for a cruise line, I was able to travel to the Mediterranean and the Caribbean and all over the place. And, and plus some, you know, a lot of, of places in the States as well. So, and it's like one of the things that I really believe is that more people, maybe not right now, uh, but in a normal situation, more people should be traveling and meeting others, uh, people of different cultures, and just learning, you know, and like you made reference, like you said earlier, which was, uh, you know, our commonalities, but learning the differences helps to really recognize the commonalities. Mm -hmm. When you go someplace, it's mm -hmm. like, it's a new, it's a different world, you know, the, oh, look, they drive on the wrong side of the road or, you know, they call things differently. And, but then when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, they, they have parents, they have kids, they have jobs, they have bills to pay. They have all of these things that we all do, you know, just as humans, Yeah. you know, and, and you can find those, those likenesses, but I like traveling. It's been a long time since I've been able to travel, but I really enjoyed going to a completely foreign place, learning, you know, at least a little bit of the language. Mm -hmm. So I could say the simple, you know, the basics, please. Thank you. Hello. Good. You know, good evening and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's one of the things where, where have I been is, is really one of the, cause I've been to many different places, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you know, and that's what I like. That's very um, cool. That's very cool. Well, this is one of, um, so, um, working on studio A3R and, and seeing it come to fruition. One of my wishes is that people tune into the program and begin to say, what are you practicing? You know, when you go meet someone, everyone says, what's your title? What do you do? You know, it, it just almost seems rude. Like, you know, yeah. you have to be somebody to be valuable at a party, you know? Um, and so my fantasy is that people actually start talking about what are you practicing and that what are you practicing actually becomes a really cool part of our culture, that kind of conversation. But, um, this is only a sliver of a sliver of what you do. I'd love you to share with our audience what, what your goals are, like your, you know, what you're working on outside of this. So, well, right now we're, we're, we put together a movie. We shot a, a movie, wrote and uh, shot it here in Rochester. It's called Bottom Feeders. <laughs> and it is exactly how it sounds. It's a comedy about uh, two college guys who are really just sort of bottom feeders. They're, <laughs> There's not a whole lot of uh, of any social redeem socially redeeming qualities with these guys, um, but it's a good time. It's a it's a fun little story, and uh, it was a project that my uh, my business partner here, Steve Miller, wrote a long time ago, and we said we have to make a movie before we're too old to make movies, and we're just old crotchety guys that are pissed off that we never made a movie. Right. So we're like, we got to do this. Right. You know, I've made. I don't know, like 10 short films, right? A short film is, you know, a handful of days, maybe two, three, four days of shooting. You usually do it over the weekend. It's, you know, everybody comes together and they, they do it for the joy of doing it and right. for pizza. And, you know, but when you make a feature film, you're talking about 15 to 20 days of shooting. You're talking about 10 hour days and just a long process from pre-production all the way to po right now we're in post-production. So the film is, for the most part, it's edited, but now we have to uh, put the music together and we have to do a final mix. And each one of those little phases costs money. Mm. And we decided to try to do this ourselves. We tried to get investors, uh, but we, well, frankly, we don't know anybody with money, so we had to figure it out on our own. And, I, you know, that's kind of one of the cool things about it is that we said we were going to make a movie and darn it, we made a movie. You know what I mean? We shot a movie and we it's not like we have a bunch of big stars. The biggest star in our movie is a guy named Jeremy London, who you may remember him from Mallrats or from uh, Party of Five and 
couple of other uh, Wait a minute, films. Party of Five, which one was he? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see it. I never watched Party oh, of Five, Party but Jeremy Five. London, his uh, his twin brother Jason London uh, starred in Dazed and Confused. Oh he was like God. the main dude. I'm going to have to IMDb. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's so, super cool. He's going to be irritated at how you introduced him. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He deserves much. He's... He's a fantastic actor and an, wow. an amazing human being and an incredible artist. Wow. He does. I, I keep calling him a rena, renaissance man. That's nice. Because now he's he's he paints. He, he just he just published a children's book. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. He's got like this whole garden since the pandemic. He got into gardening and he's created this whole garden and just is a, he's a fantastic person. And who we met through a friend of a friend. And we sent him the script and he loved the script and he was like, yeah, I want to be part of it any way I can. We lost touch with him for about a year and then, but he's always been kind of like in on it. And so when finally we said, we're, we're going to do it, here's your dates. Can you do it? He's like, yes. I'm like, all right, we'll fly it now and we'll fly up. He's in Mississippi. We'll fly it in New York. And we wrapped on March 13th, Friday, March 13th, which was like the day that the NBA announced that they were canceling their season that like everything just started closing. Right. Right. So we wrapped the day that everything started closing down. So what, what's amazing is that, um, so you closed, um, you ended when the NBA ended and then you launched your journal practice when I'm launching studio a three R. Right. And I so, didn't even know like, that's just a total coincidence. Well, or not, or <laughs> right. <laughs> So Depending on what you, how what you, you believe, what you believe right? right? Let's see. We're going to tie these loops together. Yeah, yeah, I swear yeah. to God. So, um, so we, um, you know, there's money paid down. Like this is an investment. This is both of us have bucket list items that we're working on. Even mm -hmm. the movie and me and this. Um, but I, it, my vision is that that I do get sponsorship and I do get an opportunity to do this really, really well. The first 18 guests are all people that I've met and worked with over the last 20 years. Um, they're very successful people. Many of them are published authors. Um, really lucky to have a way to feature them. Um, so I love the number 18, which will be another show. But um, so the first 18 are handpicked. Uh, the next, because I'm so excited and I know we're actually going to be able to go beyond 18 programs. The next 12 will be handpicked. But um, the people, um, every time a person's on our show, um, I will be asking them um, to name one person that they think is really interesting and then after collecting uh everyone's people they think are interesting then i'll do my due diligence and then choose the next guest so there will you know eventually um there will be a little bit more uh, unknown and so i'll be learning more um eventually um because i think someone said well you know aren't you gonna run out of guests i'm like i won't run out of guests but you're right i probably should actually have some co-creation with um our guests you know, and make it yeah. happen there. So, um, yeah. so I don't yet have any cool way to sign out except for what I always, uh, end in my emails is that I'm in the rigor. So I'll just say in the rigor, Jennifer. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, I know how to close it out. Yay. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you can do is, uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast, rate and review it and share it with others. And that's the best thing that you could do for this podcast right now is to rate, review, of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already, right? And I don't know. Right now, I'll just say keep on keeping on, but I'll come up with something better. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. This has just been so easy and so fun. I hope I hope you all have as much fun listening to us as it, this has been um, really just lovely. Yeah, it's been fun. All right, out. Peace out.